Hey, welcome back to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to talk about how to find arc length and sector area using radian measure. So first we need to be comfortable with converting from degrees to radians and radians to degrees. So let's do a quick reminder. Okay, 200 degrees is how many radians? Well, our conversion is 180 degrees is equal to uh, pi radians which is half of the circle. So you can take that, multiply it together, and you end up with 200 pi over 180. And then you just have to reduce that. Let's just cross out the zeros, and that gives us 20 pi over 18. And we just reduce by 10 by doing that, and then reduce it by two, so that's 10 pi ninths. So that would be in quadrant three, if that's helpful at all. Okay, 315 degrees, we would do the same thing, 315 degrees uh, over 1, and we're going to convert it by multiplying it by pi over 180. Okay, that gives us 315 pi over 180. So 315, let's see, that's definitely divisible by 5. 315 divided by 5 is 63. Sorry, I've got my calculator here. So that's 63 pi and 180 divided by 5. Oops. 180 divided by 5 is 36. And again, it reduces by what? At least 3. So that's going to give me 20 over 12 and reduces by 2. 10 over 6 reduces by 2 again. And that gives me 5 thirds pi. And that's the angle measure, 5 thirds pi is the same as 315 degrees. Now, how do you convert from radians back to degrees? Well, remember, we just use our same ratio, but this time our pi goes on the bottom and our 180 is on top. It's nice because our pi's cancel. 2 goes into 180, 90. 90 times 3 is 270 degrees. So that one was pretty easy. Okay, let's take 2 pi. Fifteenths, and again, we're going to multiply by the ratio of 180 over pi. We want the pi's to cancel, and they do. And then you end up with um, 360 over 15. Let's see if that reduces nicely. 360 divided by 15, 24, 24 degrees. So that's how we convert. Okay, just a quick little reminder. Now, let's look at the second section. Okay, arc length formulas. There's one for degrees, and we can use that. So if you ever get really confused in radians, you can always switch back to degrees and convert it this way. But the arc length of an angle is the arc measure of the central angle over 360, which is the fraction of the circle, times pi, uh, 2 pi r, or, Another way I like to look at it is the measure over 360. I like to just use d pi because two radiuses is a diameter. It just kind of simplifies the formula for me. And that gives me arc length. Okay, so real quick refresher, 360 degrees, which is a whole circle, is two pi radians. So you gotta know that conversion, which is also 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Okay, our formula that we used in the last lesson was arc length, or was the central angle to find theta in radians. We took our arc length and we divide it by the radius. Well, if you want to isolate S, or the arc length, you can multiply both sides by R, and lo and behold, what do you get? You get radius times theta is equal to the arc length, which is our arc length formula. Okay, so our arc length is equal to the radius times our central angle, theta, but that theta has to be in radians. So let's look at a couple of these. Let's find the length of the intercepted arc. So this is a nice basic working forward problem. Okay, so let's write our formula down. Arc length equals radius times theta. Okay, our radius in this case is just 12. So 12 times our, our central angle. Notice our central angle in radians is 2 pi thirds. So to find the, um, the arc length, we just multiply 12 times 2 thirds pi, which gives us uh, 3 goes into 12, 4. 4 times 2 is 8 pi. So that is our arc length. 
8 pi. Whoops, there you go. You can see it a little bit better here. So just multiply this out. Okay, let's look at one more of those. Okay, we have our formula, arc length equals radius times theta. So if we're trying to find this intercepted arc, we are going to um, take our radius, which is 9, times 11 pi twelfths. And that gives us, let's see, let's reduce this by 3. So to re reduce this by 3, that's 3 and that's a 4. So that's going to give me 33 pi fourths. And that would be the arc length of that intercepted arc. Okay, now let's work them backwards. This time we're going to look for the angle in radians. Okay, we're given the arc length and we're given the radius. So our formula is S is equal to R theta. And this time we're finding theta, so if we have to divide both sides by R, so we're just going to take our arc length divided by radius. Well, our arc length is 30, and our radius is 14. And so we just reduce that to what? Divide by 2, that's 15 sevenths and that would be in radians. Now there's not a pi with that answer, but that's okay. You don't always have to have a pi with your answer, so it'd just be 15 sevenths radians. Okay, let's look at one more of these. Our radius is 100, our arc length is 310. So we had S is equal to R times theta. Let's isolate the theta so we can solve for it. So arc length is 310 divided by 100 and that just reduces to, what, 31 tenths radians. And that is our angle measure, again, without a pi, and that's okay. Okay, let's look at the next section. What about sector areas? Okay, to find the sector area in degrees, again, we take our arc measure over 360, which is the fraction of the circle, but this time times pi r squared which is the area of a circle. So we're taking a fraction of the area of the circle. So the measure over 360 times the area of the circle, which is pi r squared. Okay, to find the sector area in radians, we would do theta over two times just r squared, where theta is the measure in radians. So it's a pretty simple formula in radians. So let's use our sector area formula to solve the next couple problems. Okay, find the area of the sector. Okay, so we're gonna take our formula, I'm gonna write it down, sector area is equal to theta over two times the radius squared, and let's plug in theta. So we have two pi thirds divided by two, be careful with that double fraction, and then times radius squared, 12 squared. Well, 12 squared is easy, that's just 144, but let's talk about dealing with this fraction. That's gonna be the same as two pi thirds divided by two. And if you remember it, we take two pi thirds, and then you keep it, change it, and then flip this to a half. So that's gonna give us pi thirds. So pi thirds, and then I'll just bring this 12 squared down times 144, is going to give us, let's see, those 144, is it divisible by three? Yep, 48, okay. So then we multiply this together and we get 144 pi divided by three, which simplifies to 48 pi. And that is an area, okay, that's an area. So we have to put units, in this case it was centimeters. If you go back, that was a centimeter. So that's gonna be centimeters squared. And there's our final answer. Okay, let's try one more of those. Okay, our sector area is equal to theta divided by two times the radius squared. Well, our theta this time is 11 pi twelfths, all divided by two times 9 squared. Okay, now let's deal with this fraction. We have 11 pi twelfths divided by 2, which is 11 pi twelfths times a half. So that's going to give us, and then I'll just bring down my 81 here, 81. Um, that's going to give me 11 pi over 24 times 81 over 1. 
Okay, let's see, 24 and 81 should be both divisible by 3. So 81 divided by 3, that's 27. And 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay, that's about as far as we can go. So 27 times 11, with that would give me 297 over 8 pi, and that would be in inches squared. And that would be my final answer for the sector area given radians. So it's a pretty simple formula. You just have a little bit of fraction, a few fractions to deal with. Okay, so let's look at these last ones. Find the radius of a circle to the nearest tenth. Okay, so now we are given the, the third unknown. All right, now we're going to look at finding the radius of a circle to the nearest tenth. Okay, the formula that we've been using is sector area is equal to theta over 2 times radius squared. So this time we're going to be given the sector area, we're going to be given theta, and we're going to have to solve for r. So let's use our formula and plug in what we know. Well, For this first one, we know that the area is 150 square meters. Now, our theta is 3 pi fourths. But we've learned after doing several of these that dividing by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by half and then we can solve for r squared. So let's simplify this. So that's going to give us 3 pi over 8 times radius squared is equal to 150. Okay, so how do we get this r squared by itself? We multiply by reciprocals. So let's multiply this by uh, 8 over 3 pi and multiply this side by 8 over 3 pi. Okay, so let's simplify that out. See, 3 goes into 150, 50 times. So 8 times 50 is what? 400 divided by pi. Now, 400, let's do that. 400 divided by pi, which I'm going to use 3.14 on my calculator, and that's going to give me 127. So that's 127.39 is equal to r squared. Now how do you undo a square? Well, we're going to use our square root button, and that gives me 11.286. So 11.287 or 286. And that would, we usually round to the closest, let's see, the direction is a tenth. So that we look at the tenths place and that's 11.3 and that would be our radius. So that sounds about right because of looking at our, our, this sounds like a reasonable answer. Let's work one more of these. Okay, again, taking our formula, let's plug in this time our area as 175 square inches. So that's going to go in for sector area. Our theta is 5 pi 6. So 175 is equal to 5 pi 6 divided by 2, which is times a half, times radius squared. Now, does everybody know where I'm getting this? Because dividing by 2 is equal to multiplying by a half. So I'm just multiplying the fraction by half. So it gives me 5 twelfths pi times radius squared is equal to 175 and then multiplying by reciprocals, so multiply this side by 12 over 5 pi times 12 over 5 pi. And let's clean this up a little bit. So let's see, 175 divided by 5, well I know it's divisible, it's 35. So we have 12 times 35 over pi is equal to our radius squared, because all this side cancels out, correct? Okay, so let's see, 12 times, whoops, 12 times 35, or 30, yeah, 35, is 420 divided by pi, and that's equal to radius squared. So let's take 420 divided by pi, so I'm going to divide it by 3.14, whoops, try that again, 420 divided by 3.14, and that gives me 133.75796 is equal to r squared. And then we're going to square root both sides. 
So take the square root of that, and that leaves me with 11.56, which said closest tenth, so I have to make this a 6. So 11.6 is my radius. There you go. So you've seen how to use this sector area problem. Uh, if you don't know the theta, if you don't know the r squared, and if you don't know the sector area. So I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you.